what are the golden rules for you this winter, if you're planning to spend a lot of time on the trainer, what are the golden rules for indoor training? What should you focus on to make sure that you do weaponize it? Well, the first thing I would say is think beyond your power, your FTP, your watts per kilogram, all of the output side. All that is, is a measurement. Okay, that's not the yield. So your success over the course of the winter is not just about more power, more power, more power, because that's a really challenging and incremental gain once you get up to a certain level of fitness. A purple patch, we focus on what we call the three Ps, and that is your great posture on the bike, number one. So in other words, oh, Okay, how am I sitting on the bike? Making sure that you're not carrying unnecessary tension in your shoulders, in your neck, and you're sitting quietly, subtly on the bike with just a strong core where you're actually sitting there. No matter what level of fatigue, you look like a ballerina, poetic. And so great posture, number one. Number two, we think about great pedaling the different forms of pedal stroke and how you actually really think about maintaining a lovely phrase that I like to talk about, constant tension on the chain, not allowing any micro decelerations, flowing through and introducing variance into how you're pedaling, depending on whether you're doing high force to whether you're doing lower force, whether you're doing high cadence, low cadence, etc. So pedaling is the second one. And then finally, output, it's power. So you got posture, pedaling, and power. These are the components that we think about. And as we go through here, the key, let's just go through each of them. The key is always riding great with great upper body posture. So let's talk about posture first. We think about this, that starts with your upper body always, ensuring that your upper body, your elbows are subtle. You see so many people sit on a bike trainer with locked elbows and they sit there with very stiff. So from shoulder down to wrist, it is a straight pillar and those become stiff. And that is a habit that many people integrate on the trainer. They're sitting outside, they just choke back, they lock the elbows up and they're sort of resting on their elbows in many ways. The challenge with doing that is it's a little akin to riding, driving in a car and removing all of the shocks and you're bouncing up and down the road. So when you have locked elbows and your shoulders moving up towards the ears, very stiff, firstly, not only are you reducing economy, it's actually costing you more miles per gallon in terms of energy, but it's also an inhibitor of number one, riding safety, because now you're bouncing up and down the road. And if you do hit a pothole or a stick, it's much higher, higher likelihood that you bounce off the bike. And that's not a good thing. But also with that negative posture, it's impossible for you to do the following. Go around a corner, stand out of the saddle, control the bike in wind, and many other factors. So you are by definition, just with that simple habit, poor posture, you are a worse bike rider. And so if the bike is static, the only way to ingrain that as a habit is every time you're riding your bike inside, hold yourself accountable and build the habit of great posture. Upper body very quiet, relax, shoulders supple. If you're in the time trial position, allowing your tension on your neck to drop down allowing your ears to drop between your shoulders so that you're more aerodynamic and you get comfortable sitting in positions for a long time. And when fatigue starts to strike, you're able to retain really good posture. So that in itself is not only going to make your outdoor riding better and safer, it's going to help you navigate when you do go and apply those outdoor skills, standing, cornering, braking, riding in different wind, et cetera. And that becomes really important. The second P is pedal stroke. And we think about riding for the most part, you see a lot of more junior riders, less experienced riders stamping on the pedals, making it very quad heavy, the muscles at the front of the pedal stroke. 
But a better way to think about your pedaling, and of course, this is on a podcast where most of you are listening to me and not watching me. And so this is challenging to apply this education over the airways, as you want to call it that. But I'm going to do my best here. The majority of your power in the pedal stroke is coming from your upper muscles of the leg. So in other words, your glutes, your quads, your hamstrings, etc. So everything from the hip to the knee. And so for the most part, the fulcrum of your pedal stroke starts at the hip and then your femur, that big upper, that big bone, it's the upper part of the leg, all of the muscles surrounding that, that's your engine room. That's where the origin of your pedal stroke is. And most scenarios dictate that anything under the knee can just be a response from the fulcrum, which is at the hip. So in other words, think about it like a garden hose outside when you whip it. 10 yards down, whoosh, it just whips at the end there. That's what your ankle's doing. It's just tracing the origin of the pedal stroke. And so with the pedal stroke that you're applying when you're riding your bicycle, you can use that and employ it and improve that so that you're getting, yes, you're always going to get most of your power from the front of the pedal stroke. That's where you're biomechanically most efficient and there is going to be the pressure, but you want to even it out so that you can get constant application of the chain. And so you're not just stamping up and down like pistons. In fact, your pedal stroke is more elliptical in nature, almost sliding back and forth where you're still getting most of the power from the front, but the retreating leg the one that is opposing that is also giving a little bit of an unweighting of that rear leg as it comes up the back so that you can maintain constant tension of the chain. One of the things you can do over the course of this winter is really become an artist of your pedal stroke. A great way to do that while you're riding is just close your eyes and feel it under the arch of your foot. And you should feel this constant tension. There shouldn't be a chunk chunk, chunk of your pedal stroke. It's more of a and it's doing that. And the nice thing is you can get feedback of this just in the warm up as you go through. Don't worry about single leg drills or anything like that. Just focus on one leg. Then think about the other leg, keeping the opposing foot clipped in and feel and think about this phrase, constant tension on the chain. It's going to help you. So if you can achieve those two things, which is upper body, really quiet, really supple, and then your pedal stroke, constant tension on the chain, that's going to radically improve your efficiency. And that becomes really powerful. So just those two things, the two first of the three Ps, posture and pedal stroke, is going to help your miles per gallon. It's going to make, help you get more output relative to whatever fitness you gain. But then the third, and remember it's power, the third is really where the magic occurs. And it's built on the shoulders of great posture and great pedal stroke. Now this is power, but it's not my, what you might think. Because I'm not talking about just getting more power, being able to generate higher output, more watts on the screen. It's more the distribution of your power to give you speed return. And this is where you can add to your toolbox of yourself as a bike rider. So let's talk about this. Now, as I'm, as I'm discussing this, let me level set here a little bit. In order for this to really be effective, you're going to want to have access to a platform that can simulate variability in terrain. The very best platform out there, by the way, Velocity. That's the name of it. That is the platform that we use at Purple Patch. And so when you're a Purple Patch athlete, all of your training sessions are built in velocity with videos so that we can coach you through these sessions. But the platform itself is velocity. That's the name of it, okay? And, uh, and it is by far, I say this, I don't have any vested financial interest in velocity, but I will tell you this, of all of the platforms out there, this is the only platform, and it is head and shoulders from an educational standpoint and skill development standpoint. There is nothing else like it. I don't have any best interest in them succeeding or not. 
It is powerful. It's the reason that we've integrated it. And I'm going to try and explain a little bit why on this. So terrain management. The way that the platform works, and it's very, very smart, they have great algorithms in here, is they have algorithms to simulate rolling resistance of you as you're riding. And what I can do as a coach is I can shift grades. So 0%, 1%, 2%, 3%, 4%, 5%. So the degrees of the grade go up. And then we can have cresting and having descents as well. But it's not a light switch. It doesn't go from 0% to 1%. Because what the algorithms do is they understand the speed that you are riding simulated on the bike. And so if I go from a 0% grade to a 4% grade, if you think about what happens outside, if you're going from flat road to a hill, you're carrying speed, let's just say 18 miles an hour, riding along a flat road. And as the grade comes up, incrementally, you feel the grip of gravity as it starts to work against you. And that tension on your chain increases as you're losing speed and the hill has its way. And on the platform, it works like that, a little bit like a roller coaster going through and starting to feel the grade coming up. Conversely, if you're riding up a grade 4% and you're going to transfer to a negative 1% or 2% grade, the same applies. You feel tension releasing, doesn't just release like this, releasing, and gradually gravity becomes your friend. So what does that, why is that important? Well, no matter what output you're doing, just like you're riding outside, we get to help you learn how to use variants of cadence, the proper utilization of changing gears, and the combination, of course, blending them together, gears and cadence, for you to actually navigate riding up a hill, cresting over the top of the hill, riding through the dip of a roller, managing to vary different grades so that you get a better speed return for whatever power you're riding at. And this absolutely smashes the myth. If you're thinking when you ride your bike outside that you just want to stick to a single cadence, or you want to, as they talk about, flatten the course. In other words, no matter what happens with the grade going uphill or downhill, you hold one power. It's a myth. That's a sure way to blow yourself to pieces or go very, very slowly. And so this is a way that you get to distribute your power, the third P, in a smart way to yield the best speed return. And so when you have simulated terrain like that, not only does it make it really fun, it's incredibly empowering. So as I'm recording this show today, I just finished coaching a class where we had in-person about 20 athletes, because that's how many people sit in our studio in San Francisco. And then I had another 50 athletes or so globally, all over the place, two-way video. And we went through a moderate output, what we call zone three, so somewhere around a six out of 10. And their whole game was they had to keep the same power. But what I did is I did constant varying terrain, 0%, 2%, 4%, 5%, negative 1% rolling through that multiple times over the course of 13 or 14 minutes. And what we did there is I said, I want your output to be exactly the same, but you're not going to change gears. And so what I was teaching them there is how they can manage their output with just using cadence. Now, next week, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring them back and we're going to do the same workout, but I'm going to have them fix at 85 RPM. And now the goal is the same zone three output, but this time they're going to have to only change gears the whole time. So they're getting to moderate and manage their speed return through gears, holding the power exactly output. And then of course, the third week we combine it together. Now I want you to try and get the best speed return and distribution of the work over this variable terrain to see if you can go faster using shifting power. When you're going downhill, probably slightly less power going uphill, a little bit more power, fat, pretty even power and using gears and cadence. And what starts to occur as you go through this process and you repeat that educational process, that's why we call it bike school, you get faster because you start to learn, ah, I've got feedback loops here. 
And that is it. That's a really, really powerful tool. So terrain management, I've gone on for five or 10 minutes now just on this piece, but that's the third piece. So the three primary tools that you have is to improve your posture, improve your pedaling, and improve your distribution of power. Those are the three Ps. And if you think about that and nothing else, when you go and sit on the trainer, you're going to get faster. So let's just think about one other opportunity that you have on the bike trainer. And we call this the Purple Patch Special Source, but you can utilize it. You don't need to be a Purple Patch athlete. There is a great understanding of utilizing variants of cadence when you're riding your bike outside. Most of the time when you ride your bicycle, you're going to spend 90, 95% of your time in a relatively narrow range, somewhere around 70 RPMs or revolutions per minute up to maybe 95. And even in there, most of the time when you're riding on the flat road, you're going to be somewhere between 80 and 90 RPM. That's pretty typical. Great. But there is a powerful training tool that you can do best done on a trainer where you work on what we call end of range work. And what I mean by end of range, if, if your low end of that normal range is six, 65 to 70 RPM, upper range 95 to 100 RPM, doing specific intervals at the low end of that range and the high end of that range. So at the low end, we call it strength endurance. It is a powerful bridge between the strength training you do and the spike specific intervals that you want to do where you do consistent work at very, very low cadence. How low? Well, starts at 60 to 65, goes down to 50 to 55, even goes down to 40 revolutions per minute. Very strong high torque intervals. The absolute, absolute catalyst of improving your riding performance. Hugely important. Everyone should do low cadence work. On the flip end, neurological efficiency and improving your pedal stroke, doing relatively low power, high, high cadence work. We call it neurological conditioning. Really good to smooth out the pedal stroke, very effective. We just do a little bit of that. It also becomes a tool if you're ever finding yourself in a place that you've got a strong tailwind, then keeping relatively low power, high speed and being able to sit comfortably at 100, 105, 110 revolutions per minute without your heart rate blowing up, you want to train it so you become better. So that's a real outdoor application, but the real catalyst, that low cadence strength endurance, that's powerful. So that's a lot of information. And you might listen today and think, goodness me, I haven't even thought about any of this stuff. It's really hard. If you have any questions at all, feel free to reach out to us and we'll try and help you a little bit. But you know the best way to really improve this? Experiential learning. So I talked about this at the top of the show, but this is a genuine invite. If you want me to teach you this and then just hop in for a free session, reach out to us. We'll set you up. We'll make sure that your trainer's set up. And if you have a smart trainer, particularly at your house, it's so fun and rewarding, but you're going to get faster. And if you can carry that away and then it's going to help you. And so much like in our webinar where we offered everyone a free consult and many, many people took us up, that's good for us because if we get to help people have a great off season, as we talked about a couple of weeks ago, that's super for the sport. It helps people. And if we can help you understand how to weaponize your trainer, purple patch or otherwise, that's good for the sport. And so feel free to join me. It's a lot of fun and it's a personal invite. Two-way video, I don't think you'll regret it. Okay. Just remember this as a final message. Improving your fitness is not enough for this. If you want to gain outsized performance gains, and then I encourage you to focus on mastering bike handling, your posture and pedaling, and terrain management, and use it to enhance your outdoor riding. Become a better bike rider.